The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the web, a webinar under the Boost Your Career webinar series co-sponsored by Tulane and Sue Mentors. Today, we're talking about a topic that's familiar to many people, and I title this, No Reply. Is anybody actually out there? When I get requests from people about connecting or help, I view them as looking like this. They're usually pretty desperate. They're sitting in their uh, cubicle or at a um, coffee place on their computer, and they're sending stuff off, uh, usually electronically, but into this big faceless building of a lot of windows that are all the same. And um, this is the kind of situation I think that many people feel like they're in in a variety of professional situations, but definitely about not getting a response to either job applications, networking, outreaching for outreach for help. We're going to take this. Um, we're going to break this down into causes and then solutions. But first, I want you to be mindful of both perspectives. There is the perspective of in-person work that you do, whether it's networking or you get an interview, and the electronic. In both cases, there is another person on the other side of whatever interaction you're having, even though electronically it doesn't always feel like there's a person there. What you can't control is what that person is thinking, what that person needs from you or could possibly give you or what fits in with the person's needs. You can only control what you are, what you're putting out there. And that's what I call the unified you, which we'll be talking about how you build that. So keep this perspective in mind, whether you're talking about running into someone at a coffee shop or networking at a conference, or whether you're talking about job applications through the electronic resume scanning systems we all have to use now. Let's look at the causes first. When I get an email from someone or someone um, calls me or I uh, run into someone at a meeting and they say, oh, I'd really like your help, Sue. They send, I ask them to send me documents and, and tell me what they want help with. And I know they're thinking, oh, I'm sending Sue this great picture, like the woman on the left, put together. We know exactly what she wants. She um, has a nice professional profile, blurred stuff in the background. The most important stuff is just featured up front in the picture. But when I look at the, the CV, when I look at the explanation in the email of what someone wants, if I happen to look at LinkedIn or do a Google search, I often see something that looks like a silhouette of a face and not even a complete face. There's no detail. I don't know if it's a complete head. So we're going to be talking about three things, what you are, what you know, and what you do. Everybody that sends me documents that tells me their LinkedIn profile's in good shape, says they're telling their story professionally, they can tell it well when um, they do it. What I find oftentimes is it's much more like this um, picture on the left, the box of books. Titles are every which way, titles are torn, some are neat, some are new, some are old. In addition, there's often something that says to me, they're sending this out not understanding their audience. So what they end up with is an audience of, of chairs, not an audience of people, because they're not understanding how to target their message. When it comes to what you know, everybody who's looking for a job or wants to network tells me they've been doing research. Lots of research, it's easy to do, so well, of course I've done it. And yet when I say to them, what are you looking at for jobs, for example? They'll say, oh, well, I'll do anything rather than what fits me best. So this cartoon is along the lines of I'll do anything. When I say to them, you'll do anything, but does that mean you want to do statistical analyses because you know how to use um, Stata uh, or SPSS? They say, well, no, I don't. I, it's just something I did in grad school. And yet it's still on their CV as a key skill. The third area is what you do. So here's someone who reached out to me on LinkedIn. Um, sorry, that ran a little fast. Um, on the left, 
This is a person who was a judicial clerk. I have no idea why she wanted to connect with me because all she did is use the standard LinkedIn request and her profile didn't help me. More often I've been seeing, especially lately in different groups I'm on in LinkedIn and when people reach out to me is people have some skills or are trying to get a job and reaching out in the electronic world. In this case, would someone help me get a suitable job anywhere in the world? They're really desperate. This nice person who commented gave them some ideas of things to do, which are very helpful. But again, this isn't the way to reach out saying, I need a job from you. When I looked at that person's profile, this is the story he told in the area that LinkedIn reserves for your summary paragraph or what I call a bio para, your biography paragraph. Instead, he just repeated every job that he had, which is also in LinkedIn, not a story. So another example is not being able to say what you've actually done. Here's someone who said that for every job, he just put up there what the job description was, expected to, the purpose of the job is. That doesn't tell me what you did. It tells me what they wanted you to do. Another example that I um, think is really important is the what I call the laundry list. You'll see on the left, it doesn't matter all the words that cut covered up, you'll be able to see enough of what I'm talking about. You'll see very good active verbs, prepared, developed, um, proactively managed, but then you'll see just a lot of vanilla words, proposals, project timelines, manage changes in project scope. Nowhere does it say what specifically, I did it financial, uh, for financial stuff. I um, worked in IT, I managed 25 staff, it's a lot of vanilla words. And what I call this long list, in addition to um, uh, the long list, is you'll, uh, it's what we call like a laundry list. In the old days, if you went to a hotel and gave laundry, you had to fill in the list of what you owned. But it's, it's harder even than a laundry list because it's like this picture. It's disorganized. It's not grouped together. Nothing's hung, hung out neatly. And I can't make sense of it. I can't even look at this picture and count how many skirts, maybe three or four. I think there's three or four pairs of pants. I don't see any socks. It looks like there's a shawl. So it's not giving people the story. It's making them construct it for, uh, you're making them construct it for what you're asking their help for. So let's turn to what you can do about it. And remember, this um, picture is to remind you that there is a person on the other side. So think about how you can be a solution to this person's problems or needs and how you can be effective and engaged and provide value in doing it. First of all, in what you are, here's my Twitter profile. It says that I mentor, I'm in public health. And if you look at my LinkedIn profile, I have the same picture. I have many of the same words. If you look at my curriculum, my CV, you'll see that my CV and BioPara up front and my LinkedIn profile are the same. So I'm not saying in one place that I'm running Sue Mentors and another place saying I was a public health evaluator to start with. So consistency is really important um, and especially around using keywords. What you'll see here and in other examples is what I call write once, use everywhere and just, sorry, use often and disseminate everywhere. This is the start of building your unified you. Simplest things, pictures, make sure you have a consistent picture and keywords. Let's turn on um, now to what you know and what you do. Here's a cover letter, parts of a cover letter responding to a job description that I helped someone um, fine tune her cover letter. She wanted to work in early childhood training. There was a job in that and she led off in her intro paragraph that she has maternal and child health expertise in both the US and Latin America which is a subtext for I can work with diverse populations, I understand different kinds of needs. And then she specifically responded in her second paragraph to the um, job need, which is to train and support professionals in early childhood development. 
by talking about the trainings she's developed and administered for educators in early childhood development. So she's got keywords in there that help them understand what her experience is, not just the keyword, but that she's actually done it in a context that um, both in Latin America and the US. Let's look at how this plays out when you start getting to your resume or your CV. I call this describing you. And on the left are the words I see frequently. Excellent communicator, I provide value to, but I'm very focused on evidence-based words and removing self-value judgment words like strong. Strong says who, how strong are you? Excellent communicator. What is the value? Show me the money, as uh, they said in uh, Jerry Maguire, the movie. Here's another way to view it. Very senior person, this is part, on, part of her LinkedIn profile. She can maybe get away with some of these things, but don't contact me if your resume says, or contact me for help if your resume says passionate and committed to, effective spokesperson. We're often taught the scientific process of answering questions, who, what, when, where, and why. Don't forget the questions also of how often, how much, how long? How frequently did she speak? How many projects did she do over what period of time? And let's take two examples that are real world examples. You don't wanna say you're responsible for something. That's the job description. It's what you actually did. Manage and oversee implies that you've been an active manager and you've also had responsibility for ensuring that these um, projects are successfully con concluded. What you'll see she didn't answer, it's a she that did this, is how much were these grants worth? Was it worth um, 500 pounds or 500,000 pounds? When she mentored in country teams, how many teams? Was it one? Was it 25 over the whole country? All of these answering these questions of how much, how often, for how long will help give the evidence of what you've done rather than just making people guess it. And here's one transformation that saved um, two lines, which in a resume is very important, but also helped focus on the two key activities that were really important in what this person did. She went on and on about budget and, and um, uh, budget work that she had. But what really, when I discussed it with her and, ha and helped her rewrite it, it really was ensuring fiscal compliance that she did. And then the most important thing was she then mentored and transferred this to staff to take on. We all are charged in our jobs with making sure we mentor staff, we bring people in and delegate more. And so we got her job description down to two bullets, uh, sorry, two lines in one bullet. Before we move on, a caution about electronic uh, resume scanning systems. They are what we all have to deal with now. So getting past them is important. And the most important thing, everybody will tell you this, is to make sure your resume includes keywords that are in the job description. Um, and also make sure that you have standard headings. So in one case, in this case, this person had her education heading, that's great. But then she wrote employment and internships and probably a better term would be experience. She did do simple formatting. There aren't any fancy lines, uh, borders, there's no fancy text. Her bullets are bullets and not um, arrows or um, hyphens or other things that I've seen people use that are more non-standard. When you're asking for networking and outreach help, be specific and make your ask as small as possible. People will not just answer, or I, I should say, I did not like getting emails that said, I'm really interested in your organization and what you do. I'd love an informational interview. Could you get back to me? So this person, um, this sample text is saying right up front, what I need is to get back to global health and I'm not working in it right now. So I'm asking you for five to 10 minutes 
I'm telling you how I'm available. And if you don't get back from me, I'm even telling you when I'm going to contact you again. It makes it very easy for me to respond to this person. It gives me two weeks. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't, but you've also added your bio para at the bottom so they know exactly enough about you without having to open a document. After any kind of um, networking, make sure you follow up. Invite people by LinkedIn. I have a lot of mentees I work with who never think to invite me to LinkedIn even though we're working together. If you do, make sure you mention how and um, uh, what kind of help you need or what kind of interaction we had. And as you'll see in the bottom left, the email from um, someone I met at APHA a few years ago, he got right back to me. It was an in-person uh, impromptu meeting at the booth of my organization, but I talked to him, gave him a little bit of advice about what he wanted. Um, he told me where we met, what he'd done since we met, and I put in, quote, his needs and then what he'll do about keeping me informed. That's very helpful. Even though I don't hear from him regularly, if I see him on LinkedIn, it resonates with me. One thing that you can do that people don't take um, advantage of as much as they um, should is to get feedback um, from a mentor, someone that you trust. And a mentor isn't just a friend or a colleague, it's someone you trust who will tell you not just everything you wanna hear that you're doing well, but also the things you need to work on. They'll help you consider how are you coming across? They may be able to do role playing with you, give you feedback on what you're putting out in your documents or in-person networking or electronically. And that's very useful. You can also try to get feedback from this organization that you um, didn't get hired at, but maybe you got a call for a first in interview or a screening interview. You may not always get feedback, but it's okay to ask about it. Um, generally, they won't answer you if it's just an application and many job, job advertisements will say, we won't get back to you unless you're successful. But if you did get through one interview, or you got some feedback electronically, you could always ask them for um, a couple specifics. The most they can say is no, um, but if you don't hear from them, it means you won't hear from them. You do need to remember that hiring and networking are somewhat um, looking for chemistry, or I call it a beauty contest because they don't always know what they think is beautiful or what they want until they see it. But um, the more that you can control what you put out there, the better off you'll be. So as we wind up, how and in what way, um, sorry, why are you doing this? Why is this helping you? First of all, as you'll see in the top left, you're demonstrating your results in ways that people can absorb quickly. You're giving evidence base, you're giving numbers, you're giving duration, you're making it very easy. On the right, you'll see you've got a cohesive and consistent story that you're able to tell, and it's across various electronic platforms, especially LinkedIn and Twitter, um, and then you use it in your in-person um, connections. Ultimately, that saves you um, time, which also saves you money, because as the return on investment, the so what question is, as you become the unified you, you benefit from having all this organized. It becomes a habit to update it because you can update it quickly. You are out there as a polished um, person who can contribute to someone's um, to solving someone's problem that they need solved. And it also makes them easier to find you and to learn about you. So that concludes our webinar today. As always, Sarah and Sue are very happy to answer um, any questions you have or if you need more information. And we'd love to hear from you about webinars that you'd like to have. Thank you very much.